No. No. What is going on here? The dye is like coming off of there. Ah. Uh. My name is Christina and I'm a DIY and decor blogger at thediymommy.com. Ever since we renovated our first camper in 2017, our family has loved camping. With the hope that we'll make memories in this new to us 2007 Jayco fifth wheel one day soon, I'm diving into a new camper renovation head first. Follow along with me as I share the whole journey of our DIY camper 2.0. Hey guys, I'm sharing this camper update a few days early because this Saturday I'm hosting the Outdoor DIY and Decor Challenge. So if you wanna take part in that, make sure to check out my community tab here on YouTube where I share all the details on that. I am gearing up to put together a huge start to finish kitchen video for the camper. So I have been going hard on painting all the cabinets and everything. So I'm gonna share that all in one video with you so I can show the complete before and after. But today I wanted to show you how I installed the peel and stuck tile backsplash for the kitchen as well as the contact paper countertop. I gotta tell you, I was so tempted to edit this nicely and take out all of the issues that I had, but I made a promise to you guys that I would share all of the nitty gritty, the good and bad about this camper renovation to show you that there's always issues when you DIY and that it's normal and you have to kind of work with them and fix them. This backsplash and countertop, I had so many issues and it's funny because I've done this before. I have done peel and stuck tile five times. I've done the countertop twice. I don't know what my problem was. I'm thinking that it's because I've been working so hard and I'm really tired. Uh, never mind all of the emotional stressors of like the current situation as all of you have been feeling as well. So I think just all of that together made me not quite as careful as usual, but I'm going to show you all of the issues that I had with this. However, I think in the end I was able to make it look nice and I'm happy with the final result. So let me show you what I did this week on our DIY Camper 2.0. The first thing I did is took this crud cutter and wiped down the entire backsplash area here behind the sink. This is a really important step if you are installing peel and stick tile like I am. Next I measured from the bottom of my cabinet to the top of my counter because I wanted to put some sort of trim here. I found this plastic trim in my studio. I have no idea what it is, but you could just go to your hardware store and just find something similar in the flooring section or even in the windows and door section. It's just a vinyl trim and I can cut it with scissors to size. I wanted it to go all the way from the bottom of the cabinet to the top of my countertop so that the tile had somewhere to stop and start. I was considering tiling all around the door, but I thought that would be uh, too much of an expense plus I thought I don't know if I would like the look of that much tile there then I took this Gorilla Glue it's a super glue and I put it on the back of this vinyl trim and then I carefully placed it on the wall if you're using super glue make sure to use gloves and not a paper towel like I'm doing here I also made sure that it was the same size on the side from the door to the trim so that it was straight up and down. I am using this peel and stick backsplash tile. It's the in-home brand. I found it on Amazon and I will link to it down in the description box below. I loved the hexagon pattern and the marble and thought it would be perfect for my glamorous styled camper makeover. I started this completely wrong. I should have started in the upper left hand corner. You're going to see why in a little bit because of just how the tiles overlap. It does not, it did not work out. So I trimmed it a little bit on the bottom and the side to fit in this first section. Again, I should have started in the top left. To be fair, the package of tiles did not give any sort of direction. So I wish I would have studied them a little bit more. And then I adhered them to the wall by removing the backing. All right, let's stop right here and let me just tell you that I do have a proper peel and stick tile tutorial here on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna link it up in the top right hand corner and down in the description box below. Stop this video right now if you want to learn how to install install peel and stick tile properly go watch that video. If you don't care and want to see me mess this up big time then keep watching. So here it was going okay. I 
was overlapping the tiles just fine vertically. You usually can reposition peel and stick tile one or two times and it's still sticky. I'm just using a ruler and just some regular scissors to cut the tile like I always do. All right, now here is where I discover that I have a problem with how I started installing these tiles. No, no. I started with the wrong side, you guys. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, shoot, shoot. Hopefully I can make this look decent. Ah! Okay, if I'm really careful, I think I can probably just line that up just so and make it work. Even though that's not how it's supposed to be. Cut that off. I decided to make a template out of some old wrapping paper to go around the window. And then I used that wrapping paper. I cut it out perfectly to the shape of the, well, almost perfectly to the shape of the window. And then I encountered yet another problem at this point. Shoot, what's going on? Oh my gosh, what is going on here? The dye is like coming off of there. Oh. Thankfully, I was able to scrub the wrapping paper dye residue off with some Windex and a paper towel. And then I was able to carefully reposition this tile so that the edges matched up nicely. And I don't think you can even notice that I messed up where the overlap was supposed to be. There's also a little bit of a gap. You can see where I cut it a little bit off of where the window is but I am using some caulking at the end of this DIY and I'm gonna show you how I seal up those little cracks. Just like any peel and stick tile job, this was a little bit tricky to cut around all of the angles and especially these round windows were, tri were tricky. I used the template method, but just made sure that the wrapping paper didn't have the die side down the next time that I did it. I found this peel and stick tile to have a really good adhesive. I've used smart tiles before. Those are probably my favorite. I also used dollar store tiles in my tile DIY tutorial video. I didn't like those quite as much. They did peel a little bit at the edges in some spots in my studio, but I was able to push them down. I don't think I would use those in a camper because of the temperature changes, but the smart tile is good and this one seems good so far. I've had it in the camper for about five days now after filming this video. And with the temperature changes we already have at night, it's, it seems to be holding well. And even after all the repositionings I did here in this installation. The rest of the installation went pretty straightforward from this point on because I had this nice big spot under the stove hood where I could use pretty much full sheets of tile. Everything stuck relatively well and thankfully this was relatively seamless here at the end. All right, now onto the countertops. I'm using another peel and stick product here, so I'm giving the countertops a nice clean as well before I apply it. I'm using this contact paper. It's a marble pattern. I used the exact same one in my other camper and I loved it. I loved how it wore over three years and Bonus, it's removable, so if I decide I don't like it after all, I can easily remove it. My dream for this countertop would be to put a butcher block, like a thin butcher block countertop here, but for now I'm going to use this contact paper. So I missed filming this part, but what I do is I cut it roughly to size, so I just cut out the sinkhole area and then cut it out uh, vertically and horizontally roughly to side, and then I am peeling it off a bit by bit, the backing, and using this scraper or this pushing tool, you can use any sort of like wallpaper, vinyl tool for this, and pushing it onto the countertop little by little. Then what I do is I use a utility knife and cut it perfectly around the sink edges, and then you'll see later around the countertop edges. I think this works pretty well. You can also move it around a little bit as you go, as I did there.
I made sure to leave lots of room in my cut so that I could cut it perfectly with a craft knife at the end. And thankfully this part of the DIY went relatively smoothly as well, which I was so happy about because at this point I was really tired. Again, I'm just taking my utility knife and cutting everything to size around the stove and around the sink. I decided to do this application in a couple pieces rather than one big piece around the sink just so that I could fit it nicely. In retrospect, I probably would have just cut this countertop at the top edge and then maybe painted the side white, but, it is, but I decided to wrap it around the side like I'm doing here, and then I used my scraper tool to push it into the edges of the counter. I think the edge looks really nice here, but then you'll see I'm not a huge fan of what happened here at the corner. I decided to go ahead and cut little slits in the corner of the contact paper with scissors. And then I'm using those and pulling them around the rounded edge of the countertop. When I used this contact paper in our old camper, it didn't, the counters didn't have a extreme rounded edge like this so I didn't really have this issue. I just kind of folded the contact paper on one part of the corner but this rounded edge was very round and the slits I didn't like how they turned out so again I might just trim this off to the top edge of the counter and then paint the edge white later or do that butcher block counter later not too sure. But overall the effect in the end looks nice you'll see at the end. Around the stove is pretty straightforward. Again, I just cut the countertop to size just very roughly, leaving a generous amount just in case I mismeasured. And then I am peeling the backing off little by little and using my scraper tool to adhere that to the counter. Again, what I like about these contact paper countertops is that they are removable, plus they're easy to clean. And I did surprisingly like how the one in my previous camper wore over even three years. I also like the glam look that these give the counter, which is exactly what I'm going for in this camper. All right, now I'm using some latex caulking and I'm caulking all of the seams to make everything look a little bit better so there's not all the gaps between the peel and stick tile and the peel and stick counter. So I'm doing it where the trim meets the tile, I'm doing it where the counter meets the wall, and also where the tile meets the uh, windows. Didn't do a very good job of this either. I'm using way too much caulking, so I have to take my fingers and wet them and kind of take away a lot of the excess caulking as well as paper towel. So I do have a caulking tutorial on my YouTube channel as well that is correct and much better than what I'm doing here. So I'll link to that below if you wanna check that out. But after a lot of fiddling around and fixing, I think I was able to make this look pretty good in the end. I also put a bead of caulking around the edge of the sink where the contact paper meets the sink. And this is really easy to scrape off if I ever want to remove the contact paper. So here is how the countertop area and the camper looked before I touched it when we got the camper originally. And here's how the countertop and backsplash look now. I think these two products made a huge difference. Again, not a huge fan of how I did everything, but in the end, I was able to tweak things to make it look nice. I'm still happy with the original sink. I think it looks nice here, and I'm also still happy with my spray painted faucet. I love the texture of this backsplash and the look of the marble, and I can't wait to show you what I do next to this kitchen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this backsplash installation and the countertop. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, how you think it turned out in the end, despite all of the issues that I had. Now stay tuned because soon I'm gonna share with you 
the entire camper kitchen before and after. It's going to be probably my favorite video of this series, I'm pretty sure. I think the kitchen on my last camper was my favorite as well. So I can't wait to share that with you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. Make sure to hit that bell so that you can be the first to know about these new camper videos and get all of the updates ASAP. I'm going to leave some more videos that I hope you guys will love right up here.